Now the next speaker, Dr. Shirali Gokharu. patients and approach to identifying barriers, intervening and assessing compliance. As we know that retinoblastoma is the commonest intraocular tumor in children and has a low survival rate, especially in the developing countries, but since it's a curable tumor, studies have been done to look for the reasons of non-compliance, but there is a paucity of information regarding the interventions done to overcome it. So my study aims to identify the in retinoblastoma patients the treatment compliance rate the barriers to treatment compliance and the role of interventions in uh, improving the compliance. It's a retrospective comparative study wherein all the newly diagnosed and uh, treated retinoblastoma patients during the period of July 2019 to June 2022 were included and the treatment non-compliance was taken as a failure to complete therapy or missing their treatment for a period of four weeks or beyond. So as a hospital protocol, uh, in the initial uh, period, we used to provide certain uh, allowances for the basic treatment and diagnostic. But later on from 2021, the hospital started providing allowances for some advanced treatment, advanced outsourced diagnostics, uh, providing grants for travel, accommodation, food, as well as had a provision of a dedicated retinoblastoma counselor with a 24-hour helpline services. So based on these interventions, we divided the group as gr uh, into two groups, the study period. The group one had 60 patients who received only the baseline interventions and group two had 86 patients who received uh, additional interventions. And the uh, barriers that were identified in uh, both of the groups were then further categorized as per the WHO's dimensions of adherence as patient-related, therapy-related, condition-related, health-related or socioeconomic factors. When we compare the results of the two groups, they were comparable, socioeconomic da uh, data was comparable, but demographically the patients coming from the rural area or traveling a distance more than 100 kilometers were more in group two. But otherwise the cancer stated presentation and tumor literality was comparable. And if we look at the treatment compliance rate, so the treatment compliance rate in group one was 40 out of 60 patients, that is 67%. And uh, 67 out of 86 per patients, that is 78 percent in group two. And if you look at the barriers, overall barriers, so the commonest barrier came out was uh, the socio-economic barrier, uh, followed by the condition-related barrier, which included the advice of enucleation, followed by patient-related barriers. Then the least common being the health-related and the therapy-related, they, they, which included some chemotherapy-related side effects. And uh, so if we look at the uh, overall compliance rate, so what we observed in our study was that 67% was the weight in group one, which increased to 77.9, nearly 78% in group two. And when we compare with the studies done in the past, they have calculated the maximum, like uh, the range of compliance was calculated by 47 to 67%. So in our study, the point that came out was that the increase in compliance rate to up to 78% was despite be being the COVID lockdown, patients missing their appointments, having uh, advanced stage at their presentation, still uh, we could uh, increase the compliance rate. This was mainly because of a dedicated retinoblastoma team as well as the best financial support and the counseling that we continue to give to these patients. But the mo most important question is what about the cohort of patients who despite receiving all the interventions are non-compliant? So this is the most important thing that comes out of the study and the reasons being certain social disbeliefs which persist in our country that still patients are not able to come to the medical facility on time. They present at a later stage and therefore what I recommend from my study is that we have to have a better awareness campaigns at a primary level and uh, as well as we need to have better financial supports for this, we need to have some uh, provisions by, by which the institutes can have better NGO collaborations and uh, better fundraising for such treatment of such patients. So these are my acknowledgements and uh, thank you. <coughs> so what do you think about your presentation? As in, um, I think this is a very important study, sir, as such to bring out that how the compliance rate has actually improved if we continue giving the financial support to most of the patients and continue having counseling. Because the most important point in my study was uh, we had a very great counseling team. Counseling team as in who has a 24 hour helpline number, as in when patient have a difficulty, patient has any symptoms, we are always there to uh, receive their calls, help them, arrange for them, 
uh, even the conveyances or everything for the hospital and that has actually helped us in improving the compliance. Though patient had interruptions, but they did had a completion in their treatment. So this is what I would The 22% like who didn't comply even after providing yes. everything. So yes. how many of them uh, were uh, destined for enucleation or all of them were advised enucleation? So out of 22%, almost 18% of patients were those who were actually advised for enucleation mm -hmm. because their stage of presentation was such. And the most uh, important, uh, the reason for this was because of the COVID lockdown, patients had, after the COVID when patients in 2021, there was, uh, they were actually a compliant patient, but then they missed they their appointment, and so that was the reason. Most Thank important. you. Good presentation. Thank you, sir.